This is one of those videos that I'm like, the only reason I'm doing this is because you asked. I love you. Just be like, I'm doing this for you. Hola, you amazing artists, and welcome to the studio. So today we're gonna to talk about something that's not like super exciting, but it's something that some of you guys have asked questions about, and that is multiple streams of income. I hate saying it because that's one of those things that a lot of those like gurus talk about, but at the same time, there, it's so good. It's so good to set up your multiple streams of income. Is it one of those things that's gonna make you super, super rich and wealthy overnight and you're gonna be like, yes, I freaking did. Let's be realistic. Setting up multiple streams of income just means that you have several aspects of your business that are either passive, which means that they are creating their own income, kind of like my merchandise stuff, like the t-shirts and things that are print on demand. Those are passive, so if it gets ordered, they fulfill the order and take care of all that stuff. And it's great because then I get my little cut and I'm like, yay. And then there's also, what is it? Shit, it's passive and... What is it called? Active income. Is it active income? It's not I active. Know. I think it's non-passive income. The other side of that is active, active income. Let's just call it that. Yeah, we'll just call it active. So active income means that like you actually have to do something. You take an action. Whenever you get an order, maybe you fulfill that order or whatever it is, but it's something where you take action in order to make that income. Income. The way that I look at multiple streams of income, it's like separating each stream of income into a thing. So even within the art studio, there are multiples. And let me explain what I mean by that. So the first thing that I have on my list for multiple streams of income is direct art sales. And basically what that means, it's you selling your art. That stream of income in of itself, I have separated into the various ways that I do that, right? So. The website is one stream of income. Doing festivals and shows, that's another stream of income. Having a relationship with a gallery is another stream of income. Having my artwork up at local businesses is a stream of income. Every single thing that I've done to really maximize my efforts in putting my artwork out there is a stream of income. For a split second, I thought you were gonna say having a relationship with Klee is a stream of income. Having a relationship with Klee is a stream of income. I mean, it can be, I've got you. <laughs> you can't say that, because then other people are gonna be like, wait, where? how, how do I get a Klee? <laughs> No, that deal is only for you. Thank you. Whenever I find out that there's like, oh, there's a stream of income that I could try, or this would be cool to do, and then I just kind of add it to my list, and whether I do it or not, that really comes down to either time or where I look at the list, and I'm like, I don't wanna effing do that. So in my direct art sales, I have artworks, original art, prints, and digital copies of the art. And each one of those, I kind of like, treat as its own side of the business. And then within those, I've got festivals, art walks, farmers markets, different types of galleries, my online platforms, anywhere where I show stuff online. Honestly, you guys, the biggest stream of income that comes into the studio is the artwork and the jewelry. And that is because we make an effort to put it out there as much as possible. That's active, it's not passive, which means that every time there's an order, I gotta either package it, get it ready, ship it out to that person, but that's what we do, we're artists. So make the artwork, put it out there, sell the work, package it, all that stuff, run a business, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I'm being honest, basically you can support yourself with just that one stream of income because that's how we did it for the first five years. We were just doing art shows and festivals and like the more we did, the more opportunities we had for selling stuff. And that led to the second stream of income, which is taking on commissions. And both Klee and I take on commissions. We also have made to order items and things like that, that we kind of treat as its own kind of stream of income. And unlike the men's restroom, there can be crossover with the streams. Hey, that's Ghostbusters. <laughs> I add to this list, so this list is pretty long. So I'm just gonna like buzz through this because I know you guys don't wanna hear me ramble on and on about each one of these. I expect you to do your own research when it comes to them. I'll tell you a little bit about them, but yeah, let's get through these so that this video isn't like two hours long. So merchandising is one that we do and we use Printful for our printed materials like t-shirts. I'm not a big fan of putting like artwork like 
my canvas artwork on a t-shirt. Because I like wearing fun t-shirts, I decided that I was gonna start designing my own t-shirts and then I started putting them out there and I was like, why not? And that, like I said before, is a passive income. Another one is teaching uh, workshops and stuff like that. You conduct classes, like art classes, things that you're familiar with. You could put together like some kind of cool like painting class and you can set those up at like local businesses, YMCA's, community centers, things like that. We've done that where we've done it in galleries and we've done it in other places you do have to take an active role actually approach them and be like hey i've got this workshop that i'd love to do uh the other one is art residencies now clean i have not officially done any art residencies but i know that the national parks has this great residency where you stay at one of their national parks for 30 days and they have a per diem and all that stuff that's one that we've looked at that we've really wanted to do we'll not be doing it anytime soon because we actually really like being in our house although they have the one for hawaii would you like to go to hawaii clean that one's the furthest away from our house. That's true. Maybe we'll just wait. The other one is public art programs, murals, things like that. Take a look and see what's going on with your arts council in your local area or in the local areas around you, right? Take a look at the towns and the radius that's around you. See if there's any kind of mural projects. A lot of times they're beautifying the town by doing these cool things that they pay artists to do. So the best way to find that is to contact you know, your local government body thing. And if they're not doing that, you should contact them anyway and be like, you really should pay local artists to do art things to make the town pretty. The more artists that call them and say like, you need to start paying artists to make this town look good, um, the bigger of a chance there is that they'll do it. The other one is art grants and fellowships, stuff like that. Usually when you look at a local arts and uh, culture type thing in your state or your town, they get a lot of grants from the National Endowment of the Arts. We recently received a grant and are putting together free artist workshops for a day here, which is really, really cool. Sponsored by the National Endowment of the Arts and the Erie Arts and Culture, because now I feel like I'm PBS. Yeah, it's true. Downloadable digital art, that's something that I just just started recently grab my art and I have it as a digital download on my website I know a lot of you guys are talking about nfts and stuff and like we tried that and it was cool uh, but basically the six that I created that's their limited run whoever owns those great good for you because those are very rare art blogging vlogging uh, for example we do the YouTube videos and because we are YouTube partners we do get a little bit of advertising I mean all these things like this isn't like big money this is one of the reasons that when you're looking at multiple streams of income you got to look at it in a way where like all right this is something that is either going to build up or I'm gonna be nickel and diming this thing from multiple areas same thing happens with the music like we do music that is distributed distributed out there and right now we're averaging maybe about five to ten dollars a month on music somebody could look at that and be like oh well that's not worth it and i'm sorry it's either you are making five to ten dollars you are making 50 cents on your music or you ain't making shit you could do art books and publications you know i know a lot of artists that do like the artist uh, coloring books and like different cool fun books like that i myself have released books for artists and i've also released a book of my art uh rafi edition one now i published that through a different thing than I did now. So eventually, if you guys want, I will do a video about self-publishing and what what the best, what how I learned the hard way, what the best practices are. Uh, another thing is art subscriptions, like, you know, having Patreon and stuff like that. We have a membership thing that is geared towards artists, but I know of a lot of artists that have a thing where like people could sign up and they get cool like art boxes and, and monthly things like that. The one thing that I would say about doing a membership thing is setting it up in a way where it's easy for you to manage because it is whenever you're doing a membership and you're managing like a community like we do, um, it could be a lot of work. There are a lot of people out there that are like, put together a membership site and you're gonna get rich. It is, no. No, not at all. It'll help. You gotta you gotta reel it back a little bit and remember that your focus is the art that you create. The other one is virtual art shows and art auctions. That's a great way to do it. We've done a few virtual art shows. We haven't done any art auctions, but it would be fun to do that. I know that there are art auction websites. I don't know if I trust them at all. I mean, if any of you guys have used them, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Maybe even do it quarterly or something like that where you're building anticipation, getting they're releasing a new series, doing things like that. We haven't really done that to its full extent yet, but it is on the horizon to 
maybe start doing something either bi-yearly or quarterly. The other thing is collaborations. Do collaborations with artists putting together an art show. Do collaborations with local businesses that maybe need art on their wall and you basically put the artwork in there and then with a tag and people contact you to buy it. Instead of being like an island, is it an island? No man is an island? Indeed, sir. Yeah, instead of being an island, be a, a bunch of islands, I guess. You know what I mean. Be an archipelago. Be an archipelago. Perfect. I love that. The other one is illustrations and design services. When people think artists, they kind of think that you could do everything. If there's any of you guys out there that have like graphic design knowledge or anything like that, don't be afraid to offer those things as services. Just see it as another, a multiple stream of income. Art installations, uh, we've done art installations. Those are great because they're like large scale and stuff. Art consulting, this is something that we haven't done or charged money for, but like a lot of times people will contact us us and be like hey you're an artist would you consult us on like what kind of art we should get for this space and stuff almost like an interior designer we always make it a point to help them out but it's not actually part of our business and we've thought like maybe we could charge for that art therapy and workshops there's a lot of artists out there that i know that do art therapy with people and people swear by it art is a great therapy to begin with and being able to introduce people to creating art for therapy is a great thing pop-up art installations and events clean and i've done a few of those where we've done our own pop-ups and stuff like that that's a great if you see that as a source of income as a way to bring in more money instead of waiting around for something to happen making it yourself art restoration and conservation that's not one that i've done but i have been approached by a lot of people that will have some old art that needs some restoring they see that i'm an artist and so i'll be able to do it so it's something to consider like if it's something that you don't mind doing restoring some art that maybe is damaged or something like that it's something I would look at. The longer that you're doing this whole art career thing, the more kind of more things open up for you. Like Clean Eye will do artist workshops and artist talks and different things like that. Those are great opportunities to get paid for the information and the knowledge that you have. That's why I think like doing classes, getting started with doing classes is such a great thing. One of the things that I haven't done though in that area is a lot of times businesses are looking for innovative, creative ways to approach certain things. And so approaching businesses for that kind of thing, like some kind of consultation or something like that. The other one is working with interior designers. Contact your local interior designers about having your art as a catalog on stuff that they're designing, that they're getting hired to design. Art podcasting, people can make money on podcasts because they get sponsors and stuff like that. We have an awesome podcast and we have no sponsors because I haven't really approached that thing yet, but that is definitely a source of income. Nice job. I know. The other one is live demonstrations, you know, live painting and stuff like that. I've done that at several events. I've gotten paid a few times to do it. A lot of times it's like I get invited to go up on stage or do something. It's great promotion, by the way. So if you can break through that shell, if you're too shy to do it and do some live paintings, it's a great opportunity. The other one is to do like create an art tour, like some kind of tour where you are putting together materials for showing people like where the artists are, where art is, um, stuff like that. We are thinking about doing that where we do some kind of event where people can tour artist studios in the area because there's a lot of artists here organizing some kind of like cool art walk where they could come in and visit the studio or the yard or whatever it is whatever whatever it is that the artist is comfortable with the other thing on the list is putting together a fundraising event so we're gonna be putting together a fundraising event for the local library because they have this awesome ballroom and we want to organize some really cool like art and music and books kind of event. Putting together events when there's nothing going on and especially if you're doing a fundraiser is a really good idea. It helps you with promotion but it also can create future uh, streams of income. Uh, one of the other ones that we tried briefly was the art affiliate program. You'll hear this one out there where people are like just start an art affiliate program where like if people sell your art then they make money and you make money and all that stuff and that's great but um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about integrating that with the website and stuff, but it's something to look at. Uh, another one that I've heard a lot about is art stock photography. We take a lot of pictures. I don't do that. I know that there's like places where you could license your, I don't know. I don't know. So that's something if you're a photographer or you want to like do some kind of art stock stuff, 
there's stuff out there. I'm not an expert, I don't do it, but it's an option. The other one is doing art workshops that are geared towards kids. The, people are constantly looking for creative stuff for their kids to do. I think inherently a lot of people understand that like, Creativity is a very, very important building block. When you're creative as a kid, you're really, really awesome. <laughs> I know I, I might sound biased there. Go to the local YMCA or community centers and stuff like that and see if you could put together some kind of workshop for kids. A bug just attacked me. If anyone just saw me flailing back here, that's what happened. A bug attacked you? Yeah. Think of like different things that you love doing, right? So like music, writing. Most importantly, the thing about this whole thing is that the more that you put stuff out there, the more you have streams of things, maybe not income, but promotion and different things like that, the more people will know that you exist and what you're doing. And it really has an impact on the other sources of income. And most importantly, being an artist, it'll have an impact on your main source of income, which is your artwork and the artwork that you create. It's not the way that a lot of those uh, gurus say like, oh, you create this multiple stream of income and then it just creates income for you all the time. It's, you, you do have to like keep promoting those and sometimes they dip, sometimes they go up. But in my opinion, even if you're making $10 a month, it's better to have it than to not have it because there's always the opportunity for it to grow. So that's it. I know that this is a long and wordy and probably boring for some people video. That's my list of the multiple streams of income up to date for 2023 and that's what I got. My question for you guys is, have I missed anything? And if I have, go ahead and add it in the comment section below. That way I could add it to my list. I think the most important thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to multiple streams of income is do not do it for the income. Do it because it's something that you're interested in doing. Do it because it's something that you're interested in putting it out there. Do it because it's something that you're like, oh, this would be cool, I wanna try it, and then try it. But don't do it because you think that you're going to make money, because honestly, these things all take time to build, and if you're doing them to make money and you're not making a lot of money, then you're gonna be sitting there thinking to yourself, like, why the hell am I doing this? If you want your money tree to grow, you just gotta lean into what you're fond of. Oh, for crying out loud. And I wanna give a big shout out to the rogue artist community, the community of awesome rogues that are out there. You guys are the reason that we're able to do these videos. And I wanna give a big thank you to everybody watching this. You guys are absolutely amazing and I totally adore you. And if you like this and you wanna watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. You wanna say goodbye, Clee? Good day. Adios.